हेलो माय डियर क्यूरियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार्म वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज दिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर सिक्सटी टू दैट इज द इंजरीज टू द यूरिथ्रा इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर द रप्चर ऑफ द बल्बस पार्ट ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा दैट इज द एंटेरी यूरिथ्रा एंड इट्स मैनेजमेंट रप्चर ऑफ द मेमरेन यूरिथ्रा एंड इट्स मैनेजमेंट दैट इज द पोस्टेर यूरिथ्रा कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ रप्चर्स ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा एक्स्ट्रावेसेशन ऑफ द यूरिन यूरिथ्राइटिस एंड यूरिथल स्ट्रिक्चर एंड इट्स ट्रीटमेंट ऑल दिस पॉइंट विल बी कवर इन दिस लेक्चर्स नाउ स्टार्ट विथ मी द यूरिथ्रा इंजरीज टू द यूरिथ्रा यूरिथल इंजरीज आर अनकॉमन एंड यूजली मो अकोर्स इन मेन सच इंजरीज यूजली अफेक्ट टू पार्ट ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा वन इज द रप्चर ऑफ द बल्बस पार्ट ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा एंड सेकंड इज द रप्चर ऑफ द मेमरे पार्ट ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा फर्स्ट रप्चर ऑफ द बल्बस पार्ट ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा दैट इज द एंटेरियर यूरिथ्रा इट इज यूजली कॉज बाय द स्ट्रेडल टाइप ऑफ फॉल दैट मीन्स फॉल अस्ट्राइड द प्रोजेक्ट projecting objects nowadays such injury is seen in the cycle accidents in gymnastic accidents fall astride on the beam and while walking over a loose manhole cover in fact this is the direct injury to the perineal region between the scrotum anteriorly and anus posteriorly now the clinical features of this condition of the rupture of the bulbous part of the urethra the symptoms are the typical three complaints are usually noted one is the local pain in the perineum bleeding per urethra and inability to pass urine dear students here is a good image you can see on your screen that is the relevant anatomy of the urethra you can see there is a parts of the urethra the prostatic urethra the bulbous urethra and the membranous urethra anterior and posterior part of the urethra you can clearly see here is a another image showing the urethral segments the prostatic membranous bulbar and the penile urethra you can clearly see in this third image you can clearly see there is a bladder neck the prostatic urethra in red color membranous urethra in orange color the bulbous urethra in the green color and the penile urethra in the blue color you can clearly see on this image this is the animated pictures the prostatic urethra verum internum membranous urethra and there is a bladder rupture is also clearly seen this is the fifth image regarding this which is showing the clear cut anatomy of the from urinary bladder to the external opening of the urethra that is the anterior urethra it extends from the membranous urethra to the external urethral orifice bulbar urethra lies in the bulbo spongineus of the penis widest part of the urethra bulbo urethral glands open in it penile urethra lies in the corpus spongiosum with the course of the corpus spongiosum its terminal part is dilated in the glands of penis that is the navicular fossa numerous urethral glands open in it now the sign always almost there is a tender swelling in the perineum rectal examination reveals a normally situated prostate this differentiates this condition from rupture of the membranous urethra there is a massive urinary extravasation and infection in the perineum and scrotum the skin is usually swollen and discolored and now the management of this condition two types of the rupture are usually noticed complete or incomplete when some part of the circumference of urethral wall remains intact the patient should be instructed not to pass urine to prevent the extravasation the patient should not be catheterized in the ward chemotherapy is started immediately chemotherapy means antibiotics and other drugs perineal hematoma may be drained if required if the catheter cannot be passed the patient is kept in the lithotomy position and a midline perineal incision is made to expose the ruptured urethra an attempt is made to suture end to end and the whole circumference of the urethra with fine catgut the knot of which are left outside of the wall not inside of the urethra it is usually done by the interrupted suturing if the proximal end of the urethra cannot be found out a suprapubic cystostomy is performed and a curved sound is passed or uh, through the internal urethra meters to the bulbar urethra this will reveal the proximal end of the similar end to end suturing is is performed as mentioned above now the complications is the subcutaneous extravasation of the urine this is i discuss later in uh, in the same uh, lecture stricture is a common complication regular dilatation or internal urethrotomy and second injury is the rupture of the membranous urethra that is the injury to the posterior urethra etiology this usually occurs as a result of the fracture of the pelvis it is said that about the 10 to 15% of the cases of fractured pelvis 
sustain either rupture of membranes urethra and extraperitoneal rupture of the bladder or both now the pathology the urethra usually is a sheared off just proximal to the urogenital diaphragm so that the prostate is displaced superiorly by the developing hematoma in the periprostatic and perivesical spaces and posteriorly with the urinary bladder due to the disruption of the pubeprostatic ligaments now the clinical features first is it must be emphasized in the beginning that every care should be taken to find out the injury to the head thorax and abdomen or fracture long bones not to concentrate wholly to the pelvic fractures only now the symptoms blood at the external urinary, urinary meatus and inability to micturate this is the prime symptoms dear students here is a good picture showing the rupture of the membranes urethra with extra vasation of the urine within the pelvis outside of the bladder you can see clear cut note that the prostate is displaced upwards and posteriorly with rupture of the pubeprostatic ligaments here is the second text image showing the management of the membranous urethra rupture pelvic catheter is within the bladder with a silk thread tied to the eye of the catheter and suprapubic bladder drain and retropubic drain are seen clearly in this image now the sign blood at the urethral meatus is the single most important sign of the urethral injury the important importance of this findings cannot be over emphasized and this should be immediately indicate not to pass a urethral catheter suprapubic tenderness and a large developing pelvic hematoma rectal examination x ray may indicate feature fracture of the bony pelvis and now management this is the most a complete rupture and diagnosis between this condition the extra peritoneal rupture of the bladder is rather difficult a vertical incision is made just above the symphysis pubis to explore the extra peritoneal tissues in which bladder urine will be seen this is clear and the anterior wall of the bladder will be exposed if the bladder is empty the injury is vesical and if it is contains some urine that is the ruptured urethra is the probable diagnosis in the latter case it is rather impossible to repair by suture and the surgeon should be content with splitting the ruptured urethra with a self retaining catheter the bladder is open and a bogey is passed in retrograde manner along the urethra to the site of the rupture a second bogey is passed to the external meatus and the two bogeys are made to contact with each other the first bogey is now slowly withdrawn which is followed by the second bogey by the both hands of the surgeon till the second bogey enter the bladder the rub rubber tube is now fitted over the tip of the second bogey and is secured by the ligature the bogey is now withdrawn through the external meatus therefore the tip of the pelvis catheter is attached to the rubber tube which has come out through the external meatus this is known as the railroad technique the rubber tube is now withdrawn from the bladder to draw the pelvis catheter into the bladder the bulb of the catheter is now inflated and the length of the silk is tied to the eye of the catheter in order to facilitate subsequent changing of this pelvis catheter a malleable catheter is now pushed through the cystostomy wound of this cystotomy is closed around the catheter the uh, retropubic space is drained the silk which is fixed to the tip of the pelvis catheter is brought outside the abdomen and wound round with a gauze piece which is strapped to the anterior abdominal wall now the complications of the ruptures of the urethra are urethral stricture urethral incontinence and impotence first is the urethral stricture this is the most important complication of this condition stricture is usually very short and direct vision urethromy with an optical urethrotome which is passed endoscopically offers easy and rapid cure should this measure fail a complex of erythroplasty may be necessary second is the urinary incontinence these complications usually occurs due to the severe damage to the external sphincter mechanism to difficult surgical maneuvers at the bladder neck may also damage the internal urethral sphincter it is noted in about one third of the patients incontinence seldom requires transfect reconstruction third complication of the rupture of the urethra is the impotence this is the this is also a common sequel of this injury it seems to be due to the disruption of the nerve supply at the time of the fracture the incidence may be vary from 30 to 80% impotence is a permanent in about 10% of the cases if impotence is still present 2 years after reconstruction implantation of penile prosthesis should be considered now dear students here is a good picture showing the extra vasation of the urine is clearly seen in the ct film now the extra vasation of the urine when urine comes through the rupture in the urethra it is called extra vasation of the urine the spread of the extra vasated urine depends on the part of the urethra through which the urine has come out first is the superficial extra vasation due to the rupture of the bulbous urethra bulb of the urethra often rupture 
from injury to the perineum or when the periurethral abscess burst the urine first collects in the superficial perineal pouch which is bounded below the fascia of the colis and above the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm this phase is closed posteriorly by the fusion of the two species and laterally by their attachment to the ischio pubic rami now the treatment urgent operation should be accomplished multiple incisions are made in the extravasated urine suprapubic cystostomy is per perform with the patient in the lithotomy position a metal bogey is passed through the bladder and through the internal urethral meatus to the perineum and another metal bogey is passed from the external urinary meatus to the perineum a midline incision made on tie perineum by railroad a celestic tube with multiple holes or fullis catheter of the average size is introduced into the urinary bladder the bladder is closed around the malicot catheter the perineum wound is left widely open with packs if there is a deep excavation due to the rupture of the posterior urethra this rupture is commonly due to the fractured pelvis and occurs mostly at the junction between the prostatic and the membranous urethra just above the uro urogenital diaphragm the extravasated urine collects in the cave of the retrius and ascends in the extraperitoneal space behind the fascia transversalis such deep extravasation may also occur in case of the extraperitoneal rupture of the bladder in this condition urine extravasates in the layer of the pelvis fascia in the retroperitoneal tissues now the treatment it is necessary to drain the retropubic space that is the cave of retrius simultaneously one should perform the suprapubic cystostomy rest of the treatment is according to the rupture of the posterior urethra or extraperitoneal rupture of the bladder now the next entity next point of this lecture is the urethritis there are various types of the inflammation which may affect urethra that is the ulceration of the urethral meatus in male children ulceration of the urethral meatus is particularly seen after circumcision it takes takes place about 6 months to 18 months after the operation lack of the protection of the urethral meatus by prepuce seems to be the main cause this leads to friction of the urethral meatus against the clothings means the cloth which the baby is wear now the next point is the urethral structure this is the quite important point now the etiology nowadays acquired urethral structure is rare there are various causes of the structure of the urethra the commonest is the traumatic particularly rupture of the membranous urethra following the fracture of the pelvis if sometimes follow the endoscopy also the various causes of the urethral structures are one is the congenital second is the traumatic it may follow rupture of the bulbus and membranous urethra third is the inflammatory gonorrhea is the commonest in the group followed by non gonorrheal acute urethritis followed by the tuberculosis fourth is the desturants here is the image on your screen you can see clearly there is a rgu showing the structure urethra there is a narrowing of the urethral passage this is the another image showing rgu there is the structure in the posterior urethra here is the extravasation of the urine with the structure of the urethra clearly seen and in this image this is the cystoscopically image showing the structure of the urethra the pic actual picture of the structure of the urethra now the fourth cause is the instrumental introduction of the indwelling catheter in inexperienced hands introduction of the endoscopy and fifth is the post operative following prostatectomy and amputation of the penis now first congenital structure will describe in the next lecture second is the traumatic structure this often follows delayed treatment of the ruptured urethra such rupture is commonly seen either in the bulbous part of the urethra or membranous part of the urethra inflammatory in this group post gonorrheal structure is by far the most common through its incidence is coming down down rapidly due to the availability of the suitable antibiotics again against gonorrhea site of this inflammatory urethral structure is the post gonorrheal structure is commonest the site in the bulb which constitutes about 70 to 80% of the cases next in frequency is at the penoscrotal junction the least common site in the distal part of the spongy urethra third site is the distal part of the spongy urethra now fourth is the instrumental structure this usually occurs from the trauma due to the passage of the too large and endoscope fourth fifth is the post operative structure whatever method is applied about to 3 to 4% of the cases following prostatectomy urethral structures occurs and now the pathology whatever may be the cause of the structure it is usually caused by the filtration of the round cells and fibroblast into the periurethral tissue this usually follows injury or inflammation to the urethral mucosa gradually there is a scar formation in the periurethral tissues this gradually enriches the mucous membrane and narrows the lumen 
or the urethra. The peculiarity is that in the bulbous urethra, the fibrosis is most evident in the roof, whereas in the penile urethra, it is more seen in the floor. Now, the complications of the urethra, urethra structure are the major complication of the structure of the urethra is obstruction to the outflow of the urine. Second is the because of the stasis of infection occurs due to the stasis of urine of infection, calculi formation is quiet. Due to the infection of the stagnant urine just proximal to the stricture, peripheral abscess may develop. Fifth is the urethra diverticulum may develop due to the increase intraurethral pressure proximal to the stricture. So, chances of the urethral diverticulum development of the urethral diverticulum. Sixth is the retention of urine is due to the obstruction to the flow of urine by the urethral stricture. Seventh is the hernia. Now the clinical features, symptoms, gradual diminution of the force and caliber of the urinary stream is the most common initial symptoms. Increased frequency, urgency and nocturia. Signs, X-ray findings, urethrogram and hoiding, cystourethrogram will reveal the site, length of the stricture or presence of the diverticulum proximal to the stricture. Now, urethroscopy. Confirm the diagnosis of urethral stricture very precisely. The stricture is seen as white fibrous tissues around the small hole as I show you in the image previously in this lecture. The urethra may be centrally situated to towards the roof of the floor. The stricture may take the form of the crescent. Now the treatment of the urethral stricture is the dilatation. For dilatation of the stricture, the patient has to be taken to the theater and it is done under the strict aseptic techniques. Dilatation is now carried out gently with boogies of increasing size. There are three types of the instrumental dilatation, intermittent, continuous and rapid dilatation. First is the intermittent dilatation. This is by far the most popular method of the three types of the instrumental dilatation. A stricture is not cured by the single dilatation. It requires repeated dilatation of the regular intervals. At the commencement, a medium size boogie is taken to dilate the stricture subsequently. Bigger size boogies are introduced to dilate the strictures. This dilatation at first is done bi-weekly and every time the largest boogie is inserted. After this dilatation is done weekly for the month. Then dilatation is done fortnight for 3 months. Then once a month for a 6 months then quarterly for a year, then half yearly for two years and lastly one year per year, preferably on the birthday to remember for the patient. And second type of the dilatation is the continuous dilatation in the urethral structure is in the technique under urethroscopy, gum elastic boogies in the name of the filiform boogies varying in size from 1 to 3 centimeter are passed through the structure. And third type of the dilatation is the rapid dilatation. That means full dilation in one sitting can be performed by the Kohlman dilator. It inflicts much trauma and is not used nowadays. Now surgery for the urethral structures are first is the external urethrotomy and second is the internal urethrotomy by the cystoscopy, by the cystoscope and urethroplasty and the surgical reconstruction. If the above methods fail, open surgical methods in the form of the urethroplasty should be restored too. If there is a short structure in the bulbous urethra, it may be excised and end-to-end -end anastomosis is performed. For these techniques of the surgery is external erythrotomy, internal erythrotomy and erythroplasties. There are good videos available on the YouTube. You can watch it to clear the concepts regarding these points. Now, dear students, here is the end of our surgery lecture number 62. That is the injuries to the urethra. Thank you.